Hello, my name is Chris Kennedy and I'm the Revalidation and CPD Coordinator here at the College. I'd like to use this video to show you how to add a CPD activity in the Lifelong Learning Platform. So from the Learning tab, you need to click on CPD Activities, as I'm doing at the moment, and then click on the Create button. You then need to give your activity a title, and I'm going to use the example of e-learning. We have e-learning available through BJA Education. You next need to go down to Activity Type, and if you click on the arrow, there are various categories here which are available for you to select. Let me just go down. So there are various categories there which you can select for your activity type. And for my one, I'm going to select the category of e-learning. You then need to select the start date and the optional end date for when the activity took place. And you can either type in the date or you can click on the calendar icon, which I'm going to do here. So my activity took place on the 31st of July. So I'm just going to put the start and end date down for the 31st of July. Next up is the details box. And this is a box where you can add some free text. So if I just type in here, I did my e-learning free BJA Ed. You next have the option of assigning to your CPD activity the good medical practice domains, the standards for medical educators, and also the CPD skills. We'll come to those in a moment. But for the good medical practice domains, it's a case of ticking the boxes which apply to the domains for the activity you've completed. And then again, the same thing for the standards for medical educators you can tick those boxes which apply for your, your activity. You can select or deselect the boxes as I'm doing at the moment. The next section is the CPD credits earned and credits are assigned on the basis of one credit for every hour. So in my example here, I spent two hours on my e-learning, so I'm going to add two CPD credits. We then have the CPD credit type box and for e-learning, that would be internal CPD credits. So I'll just click on the internal box there. Next up is the CPD skills section. And we have on the college website some guidance about how to use the CPD skills. These are the replacement for what used to be the CPD matrix. And if my fictitious e-learning covered paediatrics, if I go down to the paediatric section, which is a bit further down, I can select or deselect the CPD skills which applied for the e-learning. Or if I click on the select all option, that will then choose all of the um, options available there. When I've added my CPD skills, I go down to the bottom and click on add skills. And these are now assigned to my CPD activity as you can see as I just work through the, the form here. I've got the option of adding supporting document. So in the example of e-learning, if I've got my MCQ pass certificate, I can add that, that document there. That will be linked to my CPD activity. And then having done that, I need to add my reflection in order for my CPD credits to become activated. So you can see on this screen here, it's got my title, e-learning, and then there are three mandatory boxes that I need to fill out, and they are the review of the activity, the experience gained, and any resulting change. So for the benefits of this quick demo, if I just type in the word example in each of these boxes, these are all mandatory fields, and the information that you add here will appear in your CPD activity report, which we will cover in a separate video. So that's my reflection completed. And then the curriculum competency section, that should be ignored. And then if I click on save and return to dashboard, 
you can see now that in this section here, the CPD credits, the two internal credits which I added and reflected upon, they now appear on my dashboard and that shows that this particular requirement has now been completed. So I hope that's helpful. For any further information, please do contact cpd at rcoa.ac.uk.